Hey everybody, I thought I'd give an update on how we're going to be traveling exactly. Some people are going to be asking questions about what kind of RV and stuff like that, and so that's pretty popular to ask. And in our case, we're going to do a Tiffin Allegro Bay 2023. They actually recycled the name Allegro Bay from the past. They haven't made it in a few years, and this is actually a new model. They've never made a Super C class of RV before, so... Um, Class A is like the big bus, a Class B is a van, and a Super C or a C is um, smaller than a Class A. Typically, the cab has a, a, a usually a bunk up over it, so it kind of looks like a U-Haul truck in those ways. The engine's up front, but a Super C is a big version of that. So we're getting a Super C. It's 39 feet, 4 inches long, and then we got a 24-foot enclosed car trailer, and so researching and buying that was uh, interesting because I didn't know much about trailers. I knew a little bit just from the researching and reading and stuff. So we found a, a really nice guy just west of Des Moines who was super smart, super helpful, and had a bunch of inventory. And he could walk us through and show us different features and functionality like steel versus aluminum, a V-nose versus a flat nose. And he just happened to have one that checked all of our boxes, everything, uh, everything we needed. And um, the price was under what we had planned for, so so we got it. And um, I think I mentioned in a previous video that a friend of mine, Mike, went and towed that back for us and is storing it on his large piece of property here in the Omaha area. And then uh, we'll be hauling a car inside that trailer. So um, yeah, that's the setup. We'll have a 40, almost 40 foot RV, a 24 foot plus the tongue. I don't, know how many, I don't know how many feet that tongue adds, four, five, six feet. So it's gonna be a pretty long, it's gonna be a pretty long beast. Uh, 66 to 68, 69 type feet long. So that will limit places we can go in terms of where we can park. We can go anywhere and just stay in that area. Um, I've, I've heard lots of people in RV groups over the years talk about having similar setups. They can always find a place to go and then they're in that area. So you can't go everywhere the bigger you get, but you can get anywhere uh, and, and be in the area. So we're not really at the stage of wanting to be deep into the various parks and whatnot, if we can be in that area and then spend our evenings and weekends driving around in the car to see those, that's really how we want to explore the country right now. So that's really it. We're going from you know a house down to this um, house on wheels and so the downsizing continues the, the trailer is supplementing some of the shortage of storage that happens in the super c with the with the big class a's they tend to have um, the engine in the rear they call it a diesel pusher and that leaves the underneath space wide open with these large trays of storage space with the engine up front, there's a transaxle or differential or some mechanical thing that runs down the middle to get to the rear wheels to make them spin, and that eats up space. So we've lost some of the storage space that we had kind of pictured all this time. So we went a little big on the on the enclosed trailer. We were gonna do a 20 foot, and then we learned that a 24 footer that's a flat nose versus a V nose is barely a foot or two longer than a 20 foot. So, um, yeah, we're gonna. We have a, we talked with the trailer guy that sold it to us. Uh, he owns the business, and he shared with us kind of how he built shelves uh, using e track and some attachments and some boards or pipes or something to build shelves up above the car throughout the trailer. So we're adding a good chunk of storage space in the trailer itself, and in the front of the trailer, there's going to be you know if the car is 16 ish feet long. Um, in front of that, there's a good number of feet. Uh, and we have E-Track installed along that front wall so we can strap things down. So like if, if we put the air compressor and the smoker and stuff like that there, we'll be able to secure those really, really well so they don't, you know, roll into the car. That would be really tragic. So that's the, that's the rig. That's the setup. We'll be looking for uh, sites, either uh, boondocking sites that are typically very large, plenty of room, plenty of space, or... If we're gonna be in a campground for various reasons, we have to look for big rig access, they call it. So the apps that find campgrounds notify you or note on the on the amenities, whether it's pull through or big rig and stuff like that. 
So, and then we just call ahead and make sure they can accommodate the trailer. Sometimes their spaces are long enough, you can keep your trailer with you at your site. Sometimes they have a side lot and you'll be forced to put the trailer over there and then keep your car by your, by your RV. So another cool thing we kind of came up with was uh, the car we have has the ability to tow 3,500 pounds. And so we have a tow hitch on, on this. And then um, the trailer only weighs 2,800 pounds empty. So instead of navigating that trailer around an RV park with a 40 foot RV almost, um, tooling around with a, a smaller car should make it easier to move that, that empty trailer around. So that's the hope, that's the plan. And obviously some people go out with one plan and along the way they decide, you know, we have to change something up, shorter trailer, longer trailer, taller trailer, different car, whatever it is. So hopefully we've done, done our homework to the point that we can be set with what we have going into this. We tried to go with quality things so that we have every chance of success with this. And um, that's, that's the wish, that's the hope, that's the dream. So keep following and we'll uh, find out together if, if that plan comes together well or not. Thanks for watching.